All right, folks, due to high demand, I now have an official merchandise store. By clicking the link in the description below, you can check out the wide array of stuff I have from shirts, sweatpants, hoodies, and even coffee mugs you can put your name on. All proceeds will go to my free youth athletic programs within my job, so please consider helping the cause. Thank you so much, and have a good day. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Phantom Boxing, a brand new company starting in late 2019. They sent us a great discount code for awesome subscribers. Go to phantomboxing.co.uk if you want to try any of their six styles of boxing gloves, headgear, groin guards, hand wraps, or their Cobra reflex bag. And when you go to the checkout and enter the code COMBATCORP10 to save 10% off any and all purchases. That's COMBATCORP10 for any and all purchases. Thanks again to Phantom Boxing and enjoy the show. as always i am incredibly excited to bring you yet another gear review as today i have the 3x sports model x9 impact gel training gloves and i'm really excited to do this review because actually about two and a half three months ago i had someone get in touch with me and these were sent to me so as always disclaimer just because these were sent to me does not mean i'm going to give you a sugar-coated review if i like something about it i'm going to tell you about it if i don't like something about it i'm going to tell you and the company about that too because it's something that i want them to improve on so i can try the next product out so that's the one thing some people will always comment and say, oh, they paid you off or something. No, that's not what happens. If I hate something about it, trust me, I am brutally honest. Uh, but going into the story behind the glove real fast, my friend Terrence added me on Facebook a while ago. He started following the, the channel a little while ago and he uh, subscribed and all these other things. And basically to get the gist of what Terrence does, at least from what I've gathered, I've never really asked this officially, uh, but what he always says is, he works with 3X a lot, he loves boxing, but the other thing is he also works with, I want to say like the Nickelodeon equivalent in the UK. So he does a lot of stuff with kids programming over in the UK, which is really awesome. So what I'm actually going to do at the end of this, something that Terrence requested and, and hopefully he'll raise some money for his cause and a project he does. He always takes the photos and he puts it all over um, his uh, TV or his, uh, his channel and stuff. And basically back in the day, boxers or other people would would hire boxers and they take local leather workers and make you know scrap leather that was going to be just tossed out or burned or maybe reused for something cheap and they'd make cheap boxing gloves out of them now that's not what these are but uh they would take them and then go to a charity event for say orphan kids or widowed wives and stuff like that or other charity events take the gloves and smash their gloves on the inside of say a cake, pastry, pie, whatever it might be. So at the end of this video guys, stick around because you're going to see me in a black leather jacket and possibly sunglasses, I don't know, beat up some cakes and pastries with these gloves here. And I am hoping that they clean off well because I really do like these gloves. I, I'm sorry to give that away right off the bat. but. Uh, I love what he's doing. I, anything I can do with charitable things, especially with youth, because I actually work and run at-risk youth pro, uh, athletic programs. So uh, please, you know, go to the website and check out email, see how you can help with that situation too. And if you want to join the cause, uh, post it and take a pair of gloves that you don't use anymore and smash some cakes and pastries with them. It's going to be fun. I have a feeling. I can't wait to see how it's just going to explode and get everything all over the place. That's just a kid in me, I think, though. <laughs> anyway, going into the glove, it's Itself, folks we're going to start with the look as always this is the 3x once again the x9 gel impact training glove okay so we have an entire blue background here a blue outer shell here with the thumb is blue but of course we have some really awesome design here uh orange as we all know is my favorite color i get comments on that at least once a video <laughs> once a video oh it's not orange you must be bummed out which is true yes i am bummed out sometimes but you got uh blue white in orange here and it's a 3x professional choice right across there and of course it has their trademark so if you had a company in mind by the name of 3x i'm sorry it's trademarked you can't have it <laughs> but, but that's besides the point point. and then you have a big orange stripe going from the tip of the fingers all the way to the back of the glove and it kind of has that double stripe at the end too and it goes all the way around to the bottom of the thumb so you got a really cool design there 
uh, you can see right where the wrist strap and the wrist cuff meets the top of the glove, the punch surface, it's a white uh, bonding right there, which is actually a really cool design. Uh, just tiny little things like that is just cool to me. I, I really don't know why, but they just pop out. Uh, then we turn it around once again, your fingers rest here, that's where the end of the stripes goes, and once again you got professional choice. But here on the palm, on the grip bar, is all white, except for the blue on, or, or yeah, on, on the camera looks like it says on, but no limits here. So it's blue and black there, uh, no limits. I, I wish more companies would put their slogan on their their grip bar especially with this something like no limits i love that because you're going to see someone in the gym that puts these on and think oh man that guy has a pair of gloves that says no limits that must be what he abides by because i always tell people once again it's kind of like your zompak toe it, which for those that don't understand it it's like a, a weapon that a, like a type of warrior uses basically and it personifies the type of person you are so i always tell people the glove i use is who i am that day um probably a little bit more spiritual than you like to get into with a boxing glove review but still um once again we're going back to white uh i wish more people put uh, that on their grip bars uh then we have a white inner thumb with blue piping going down here then to the center we have a blue mesh all right, so we got blue mesh palm, so that's gonna be good. You know, we'll go into that to design, but that's gonna be good for people in hotter climates, probably. Uh, we'll open this up now so you can see the rest of the palm here. As you can see, it is a very large wrist strap, but we'll go into that to a second. Down the face of the palm and back to the wrist strap, you can see that we have white all over the place with black piping going down the center, all right? But uh, when we go to the back of the glove, we're back to blue, and it's that really nice royal blue color. I love that royal blue. Uh, it's one of my favorite colors on the planet. Uh, you have a bunch of white stitching going all the way down the palm and the wrist, and then you have blue stitching going into the thumb right there. But interesting, something that actually takes me off guard for whatever reason, is the interior lining is not black, it's gray. It's like a silverish gray color, which is really interesting because most of the times you get just that classic black thing, like, and eh, no one's really gonna pay attention to the inside, so it's black, right? So we got a black inner lining up, uh, well, yeah, now I'm even getting caught up with it. It's a silver inner lining, like a darkish gray, or even uh, depending on where the light hits, it looks like a brightish silver or a darkish gray if I bring it outside of the lighting, so it's pretty cool. And then we have a black elastic attachment here for the wrist here. Now going to the wrist cuff, uh, we have a white here with black and orange color. And once again, same thing it says on the back of the glove, the 3X professional choice. And that's exactly what we got here. Only it's in black and orange. And then at the bottom of it with a white background and black lettering, we have Napa leather. So yeah, I believe, let me read it entirely. Genuine Napa natural grain handmade leather, right? So that's exactly what you got. And we'll go into that, into the build of it. Once I tell you that the other side of this, as most times with Velcro, is entirely black, all the way on the other side. Now going into the build of the glove, we talk about the outer shell, once again, going back to the Napa leather stamp here. Okay, so we'll go a little bit closer to that, zoom in. Uh, Napa leather is what most of the times you'll see in your cars, right? So a lot of Buicks have Napa leather, a lot of new Toyota RAV4s have Napa leather. It's basically what you see in cars. And the reason why is because it's durable, it's gonna last a very long time because most cars that you get, you wanna have for upwards of 10 years if you can. You know, it's something that you're not just gonna buy for a day or two and then get rid of. You know, that, and then in that case, you'd get like something completely fake, like a vinyl or something that might not be so durable. But this is 100% genuine Napa leather. Everywhere that you see has that leather looking part, except for the Velcro, of course, the interior lining, and then the mesh here, and the stitching, which is cloth of some kind. It is all that natural uh, Napa leather. And uh, I wanna say the other company that uses Napa leather the most is Venom. You see a lot of Venom products use Napa leather, and once again, it's because it's very well made. It's, it's easy to be tailored and stuff. And it's a form of full grain leather as well. Sometimes it's slightly below, not full grain, top grain. Sometimes it's slightly below. It falls right underneath the hide. As you all know, I put something about the top grain leather, but it is a form of top grain, especially with this. And the leather looks very well aged. After I've had these for about two and a half months, you can see the proper aging all the way on the sides and the creasing in the knuckles, but there is nothing there that is really going to like damage over time. I think the only thing that's been weird about it is that we have a little tiny stripe going down there. So some of the paint is coming off a little bit. Uh, you can't really take a whole lot off the glove. There's not a lot of 
uh, leather there. So it's a thin layer that is very stretched tight over the padding, which is good. So it's not going to come off and scrape or cut you as bad. Um, because if, when you have big, thick hides, it's more likely to kind of catch your own skin and move down. This is more likely to just kind of skim across because how thin it is. Uh, the other thing about Napa leather is that it's very water resistant too. So when you spread water on this or sweat, it does become a very slick glove. In fact, I'm sweating a little bit now and I can already see that it's already like really, really slick on my face. So that's also good if you have like a sparring session and you don't want to bash each other so much. And if you don't have any more Vaseline, hey, your own sweat works. Um, the interior padding is multi-layered foams with gel injected on the inside as it's called the X9 impact gel training glove right so when we look on the side here it's a very thick layered type of foam here all the way throughout right and it's all it's not solid it's not one solid piece of foam it's a few pieces and you can always tell because one big solid piece is very puffy and bulky with this gel it's very reactive right it pushes in just a little bit it's very much, when you have gel and the idea of a glove, like say there's the Tidal Gel series, there's the Ringside Gel Shocks, Rev Gear has gel as well uh, in their Sentinel series, and the idea is that layer of gel is kind of like the impact absorption, right? So you have the foam on one layer, and then you have the injected foam on the inside, the foam with the gel, and basically what that is, is the gel is going to harden on impact in some ways. Not necessarily harden, but it's going to really recoil and cushion you. So gel is really good, especially if you have like brittle hands per se. Like I, I know one glove that I see a lot of people that have hand issues use is the Sentinel by RevGear. And that's because the gel on the inside actually cradles everything. So uh, with these gloves, something like that, I wouldn't necessarily tell you that, hey, they're a puncher's glove or anything like that. Very rarely do I tell you this, but it is a defensive glove, especially for the size of the glove it is. It's a very wide frame glove here. The build of the glove is very wide. The thumb is fat. Uh, the build is very fat here, and it covers my entire head. So if you were to do, say, like that Mayweather style, a shoulder roll, you got that. Most of the time with defensive gloves, you, you get that. But the cool thing is you can hit very hard with these because of that. That gel is really going to protect your knuckles at all times. And we'll go into that when we get into there. The other parts are very high density, kind of tougher foams too, which is the other part. But I would also wager that getting down to the bottom of it, there's some EVA foam there to kind of shape where the foam is going to go on the inside. Uh, the other cool part, once again, we're going into the mesh here that I was mentioning earlier. And the cool thing is, you know, a lot of people kind of develop this in Thailand more of, and the reason why is because Thailand's very hot, humid, it's a tropical country, and mold is going to be very prevalent if you leave it in your gym bag overnight, right? And it's also good for, you know, in case I have anyone that maybe trains down at ATT or, uh, you know, Henry Hoof's place, uh, I, Hard Knock 365, and then maybe you're in AKA in California and you are in a very hot, humid climate right and in florida's case somewhat tropical right it's hot humid you're you're gonna want something with that ventilation on the inside so the inside of your glove doesn't rot right the idea is, is that if too much sweat is getting inside the interior lining it's not going to be very good for the foams on the inside it's going to lead to premature bubbling and that's a whole different story right so going into the wrist strap as you can see it's huge compared to a lot of other gloves and that's because with this wrist strap we have a complete 360 revolving strap that reaches all the way over here, which I can tell you makes the glove seem so much more comfortable, right? So it's very stabilizing, right? I can't really jar my wrist up at all, which is good. Uh, it has that nice supportive feel here, but the wrist strap is also soft. So it's not like bracing me like other gloves, like say a T3 would, in that it's kind of stiff towards the top but it does keep it nice and comfortable, which is good, especially say you're doing Muay Thai and these gloves do open pretty well. I can actually jar my wrist back just a little bit by force, takes a little bit more and then I can get pretty good grips. But I would say for sure these are more of a boxing glove because the thumb attachment here is that webbed attachment, uh, which you know some other gloves like Yokao use in Thai, but it's kind of positioned to where a natural punch would go. This is the first time though I'll say that the thumb sticks out just a little bit much and I have smashed my thumb once or twice on it but once again if you ball your fist it's there and it's a lot better but the thumb's just a little bit too long i think now is that gonna possibly poke someone in the eye i still don't think so just because i mean like if you know how to punch you're really punching with the flatter parts of your knuckles here and that's exactly what you're gonna get uh, and once again going into why i say it's a defensive glove it's not a very flat surface 
right? It's actually pretty rounded, starting from up here, going around, right? It's more of like a big puff, like a marshmallow here, but it's a bit softer uh, than say like a puncher's glove, and it's a lot firmer than most pillow gloves out there. So it's more like a defensive style glove. You have a lot of padding. You got at least two and a half inches of padding right over my knuckles here. And that's gonna be awesome for the protection. In fact, I'm hitting here. I can't, I can't feel the impact at all. What I can tell you is that when I hit the bag with these, I wail on them and I don't feel anything. Uh, but the only thing is I don't feel, I don't feel like a recoil but I do feel I'm making a very good impact with my shot is the easiest way to word that. So the wrist support's awesome there. The thumb is a little bowed out. Uh, I wish it was a little bit modified, but I do like the web thumb here with that blue thumb attachment. But once again, I, I would just move it in just a little bit more. That would be my one complaint with this thumb. Most other thumbs that have that issue, it's kind of non-existent because if you just close your fist properly and use proper technique, it's gone. This, I might actually be worried I'd poke someone. Um, but in that case, it's not bad. Uh, I put it inside of the glove and another thing I noticed is that it is very comfortable. The only thing that I have a gripe about is that the inside lining is just a little baggy. You know, you can't really see it, but all on the inside here is like, it's just baggy material. I gotta constantly push it back up under the grip bar. Uh, but with that said, the grip bar is actually very comfortable and the palm is actually very soft as well. You know, the padding throughout the knuckles is actually the same padding inside the palm and on the wrist strap too. So you get a lot of good things going on there. So the wrist support's awesome with these. The knuckle support is phenomenal with these. And uh, in the interior lining, I just wish kind of had the, um, you know, it wasn't so baggy. Maybe you can see here, I can really yank the padding, not the padding, the, uh, the lining here right out. But the padding on the inside of the glove is pretty good. The other good bonus to this is it has that elastic bonding here. So anytime you have someone strapping up your gloves so it doesn't fan out, you know, that's pretty good. So let's go into the model view and of course the bag work so you can see these gloves in action and then come back for the final verdict. All right, so hitting the bag with these gloves is a lot of fun. Because of that gel padding and knuckles, I can wail on anything on the planet, whether it be a water bag that are slightly, you know, those are slightly hard. I could wail on concrete. I can wail on anything, and that gel padding and multi-layered foam is really going to keep me protected. The other cool part is, is that, you know, although they're 16 ounces, they're actually pretty light on my hands, so they're really easy to just glide around on. I like really... Uh, using these to really change my punches together. That's why I say they're more for say a boxer puncher slash a defensive style fighter just because of how big they are. Uh, they're light. They don't really recoil off so much uh, so maybe a puncher won't like those as much but I know even me as a puncher I really do enjoy these gloves quite a bit. So immediately right off the bat with these gloves, they are really cool to look at. They shine so well in the light. Uh, I love how the orange and the blue, the white, everything just looks perfect as you punch. You can see everything so clear, the 3X logo and everything. It's a really awesome glove. It's an awesome design, especially for the price point and everything else with it. I think you're really going to love these gloves in the way that they look. All right, folks. So my final verdict on the 3X <clears throat> Alright folks, so my final verdict on the 3X Sports X9 Gel Impact Training Gloves is I think they are an awesome pair of gloves and right now are one of my favorites to recommend to an intermediate level guy. Uh, and I say that for a few reasons, right? So going into my favorite part about these gloves is the construction of these, okay? Uh, you have that nice classic outer shell that is made of, as you can hear, that nice leather right and it has that nice leather smell and it's very very durable super easy to clean and this is the type of material that you see more higher end gloves made out of uh, but here's the thing most of those higher end gloves are upwards of 120 through 200 300 400 however many dollars right then you have these gloves which is 35 or i think 36 british pounds which is like 45 to 50 us dollars so the price range there is awesome. You know, thirty. I mean, um, not thirty, but fifty bucks plus maybe another ten bucks of shipping. It, you're basically getting 
a lot for that price, especially if you're an intermediate guy. For me, this is the glove that is, you, you bought that very first pair of gloves that you had from, say, the local sporting goods store like Dick's or something like that or Walmart, and then you decide to go into another professional, like a somewhat professional pair of gloves and really understand what type of puncher you are. And once again, I go into these. These are, for me, a defensive pair of gloves. And the reason why is because you got a lot of thick padding here that protects my knuckles a lot. Right. For me, it reminds me of, say, it's like a combination of me between the rival RV2 bag gloves with softer padding and then a ringside gel shock or a titled gel world or uh, or those contender gel world gloves and stuff like that. And I like that. I like gel padding because it has that nice rounded feel to it. It's a big frame glove and it has so much padding in the knuckles that I, you know, I can wail on whatever I want, even if I have knuckle issues, and I'm not gonna hurt my hand with these. It's a very thick, very dense padding layer here. Now, I would spar in these. Uh, I don't think they're so firm that they're gonna damage their sparring partner. In fact, they don't feel very hard when they're hitting my head like this, and I know this sounds like I'm a psycho, but I'm actually wailing my head pretty decently hard here, but they're not so hard to where I'm gonna feel an impact like a brick hitting me. The gel's not gonna do that, right? The gel's very soft and squishy on the inside of the foams here, and it has that multi-layered foam going throughout here as well. Uh, I don't think they're a pillow because with pillows, most of the time you can't feel impact of anything, and they're so soft on my partners as well. But these are not soft like a pillow. They don't feel like a pillow. They feel more like a defensive glove, that and because of how big they are, right? I would say they would be like that Japanese style too, but most defensive gloves also have that big fat thumb, whereas Japanese style gloves normally have like more of a narrow pointed thumb that's in a better position. Uh, that's like with me, really the only complaints that I have with the glove is, uh, you know, we'll go into the goods in a second, but is when I put my hand on the inside, for one, the interior lining is just a little bit too baggy and the thumb is out. Like I'm not extending my thumb out, like I'm just resting my hand, my thumb is out a lot. Now normally, like say my last video, I, I even talked about with the Akakui 2.0s that we had a few complaints that the thumb was too far out. But the thing is, if you ball your fist in a good punching position like this, it's gonna go into a good spot. But with these, even, my thumb is slightly out a bit more. Uh, and maybe have a little bit more padding going from, say, out here to in front instead of having it way out there because that will actually injure my thumb. I don't worry so much about people getting poked, although it could happen. I worry more about my thumb is getting smashed off a bag or off a surface that I'm hitting off the mitts or something or my sparring partner, God forbid. So that would be my one gripe that I would change about these and then I would call these one of the best intermediate gloves ever. I still think they are, but I would definitely put them up in like the top three if not number one. Um, but once again, the outer layer for the cowhide type of Napa leather that you get, which is really nice and durable. I love that feel. It's nice and easy to clean. It's not breaking apart. The padding on the inside will not bubble anytime soon. That's the cool thing about gel is that it does prolong the foam's life a lot longer, so long as you take care of it. And with the interior lining, especially because it's so baggy and it comes off of the padding and stuff on the inside, you're gonna wanna take care of the inside of the lining. And because of that mesh here, right, you're gonna wanna spray the mesh down too so that doesn't fall apart and so nothing sinks into the glove and starts to cause bubbling to the foam of your glove, right? Because once it starts bubbling the gel and the foam away, that's when the glove is gonna somewhat become, you know, not, you know, suitable for you. It's gonna feel like you're just kind of wearing leather mitts over your hand and that's not gonna be good for you, your sparring partners or anything, right? So it's very easy to take care of, a very easy glove, especially for an intermediate guy. Would I recommend these to a pro? Sure, uh, but I would also say that would a pro choose these over say, you know, I'll just use the four big ones that everyone use, like most Everlast out there, which I, I won't go into that, but anyway, you got Winnings, Reyes, Grants, say even Adidas has stuff, Venoms, Rival, all those gloves. Would I choose those over these? I would personally, but I do like these for bag work and mitt work a lot more than I do for sparring just because, you know, in sparring I have other gloves that I think are better suited for it, but I think for someone that needs like an overall purpose training glove and you only want to spend about 60 bucks. That's awesome. You know, the other gloves I recommended people are the ringside Apex gloves or the Gel Worlds, or rather Gel Shocks or the Tidal Gel Series or the Tidal Classic Series. Those are gloves that are really easy to get a hold of. And there's also a lot of other gloves out there that are in the $60 range that are a lot better 
than say the stuff you go to Dick's Sporting Goods or stuff like that to buy. And these are for sure awesome. And I think they're worth the way coming from the UK. And I think it's worth paying the extra shipping. It'll probably be about 10 to 15 bucks for the shipping. Uh, and it'll probably take about a week or two or maybe even longer because of COVID restraints. But you know, I think you get a really good glove in the mail here. The other cool thing is, uh, I think it reaches out to a lot of crowds because you get a really cool design glove here It makes me think of a race car and like NASCAR and stuff because of the different looks that you get here with all the stripes going down the side All the logos and stuff and that's one thing that I like about this right I really love that you can have a good-looking glove and you don't got to break the bank for it right most of the time with gloves out there you know that look like this or say you know we'll go into a company twin special right their gloves i think should only be about 60 to 70 depending on what they are but you have a 120 dollar pair of gloves that have a dragon on the side of it and you can add another 30 bucks or venom is very difficult is very guilty with that right you'll have a 30 dollar pair of gloves in my opinion that will charge you 60 because they have that really cool sublimated look to it that's a lot cooler than a lot of other gloves out here whereas this is 60 and you get a really good operating glove that looks cool as well so if i had to give an overall rating i know i don't do scorecards or like points or anything like that but in my opinion for me it's a 7 out of 10 and where i subtract the points from is the interior lining is just a little bit too baggy and it does get in the way of my of my work sometimes and i think for an intermediate or beginner level guy if that you know they have to stop in the middle of the round to fix something they're going to get hit or injured somehow and i would hate to have that happen the other thing i would say is the thumb is just for once i never complain about thumb positioning because really what it is is a lot, a lot of times when people complain about it it's you have bad technique and you don't understand it uh but in this case it's uh i'm not saying i have perfect technique but i'm saying i know what i'm doing uh, the thumb is just too far out at all times and i shouldn't have to make a real big effort to squeeze my fist too much to where my thumb has to come in and yet it still feels like it's fighting to expand out. So I would maybe loosen the restraints a little bit there on the thumb area. Uh, but other than that, I think it's awesome. Uh, I do also say, as far as the glove goes, there's a lot of room on the inside, which is perfect. Uh, and the weight is perfect too. You know, it's 16 ounces uh, is the model I have and it weighed in at that 16.2 ounces, what I got here. So the 0.2 is really not gonna change anything. Um, but. I, I really do like that. The only other thing that I think I would say is uh, the reason why I have 7 out of 10 is because I do have a feeling that in time uh, that the paint off this will start to go away because both gloves have the same issue here and it looks like that's starting to skip down a little bit and the sweat does kind of get the paint away a little bit. So that might be uh, a hindrance to someone other than that it is very easy to clean and it's very easy to keep and i would give it a good shelf life especially if you're using these every day beating the crap out of them and taking care of them i always emphasize that take care of your gloves about two to three years i would say especially if you're whaling on these things the gel and the foam is really going to prolong it and i think it's a really awesome glove i would recommend it to any of my guys that have been with me for about six months to a year or at least are at that level that they know what they're doing i always tell people it's not smart to go from a beginner glove to a professional glove it's kind of like we're going when you're going from driving your first car to getting a a race car it's not going to do it right i would for sure recommend these to anybody that's looking in the market to get a new pair of gloves i just wish they would fix the thumb above all and the inside is a little bit baggy but folks now we have to punch some pastries which is going to be the coolest part about this video so stick around and watch me punch some cakes pies and other things i can't wait for this i'll see you in a second